Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Sunday School with Pastor Jackie. So glad you're here joining us. We bless God for you and for what he is doing in your lives. Amen. Amen. So let's open up with prayer as we begin to go into lesson two of the Union Gospel Press. And the topic is overcoming temptation with the word. Overcoming temptation with the word. And that's from March the 12th, 2023. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. You are so amazing, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this space. We thank you for the people who are going to hear what it is that you have to say to your people. Amen. We thank God. We ask that the word touches each and every individual and that we are able to share this word with others who want to know, who need to know the truth. Amen. And we bless you, God. We bless you, God. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Anoint your people afresh, oh God. Have your way in us, with us, and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we're so happy you joined us. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We would love to see you back here. Amen. Amen. So again, lesson two, overcoming temptation with the word. And that comes from Matthew, the fourth chapter, the first through the 14th verse. And uh, the place is in the wilderness of Judea, around 26 AD. And uh, let's read the golden text. The golden text is, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that is Matthew 4 and 4. Amen. Amen. So I have a question for you. The question is, how often are we tempted? How often are we tempted? Guess what? The three years that Jesus did ministry, my Lord, do you realize that there were temptations? Just because he was Jesus didn't mean that he was not tempted. As a matter of fact, that's part of why he walked this world. He walked this earth. Amen. He walked this earth so that he could go through and deal with the things that we deal with. So we can't say, well, God, you don't know about this. Well, you never had to deal with that. No. Christ, amen, who is God in the flesh, amen, who, who walked as, as God in the flesh, Amen. Knew what it was to be tempted. He, he knew what it was. He went through it. And this is the thing. In the midst of his temptation, and this is why he was, yes, he was 100% man. He was 100% God. Because he was 100% God, he was able to sustain from temptation. But guess what? He gives us the ability and the authority to do the same. Amen? He gives us the ability and the authority to flee from temptation. The Bible tells us that he provides a way of escape for us, right? Does that mean we're going to live perfectly? We're not, we're not Christ. Amen? But he has given us what we need to subs excuse me to sustain from sin to flee from sin amen and so so yes jesus was tempted he yielded not to temptation amen why because he wanted to do the will of the father he knew that if he yielded to temptation, if he fell into temptation, guess what? It would be against the will of the Father. My goodness. Ah, my Lord. And our goal is to be the same, is, to, is, is the same, is to do the will of the Father. 
So as we read Matthew 4 and 1, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. My God. So here, this is right after the baptism. Right after John baptized him, right after the heavens opened and, and God said, My son in whom I am well pleased, right after the, the Holy Spirit in the shape of a dove came down and rested on Christ. This is what happened next. He was tempted. But, but guess, this is what's so amazing. It says, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Do you know there are times, oh my God, I know we don't want to believe it or we don't want to think it, but there are times when the Holy Spirit will lead us to an uncomfortable place. But if the Holy Spirit leads us to an uncomfortable place, you bet to believe that what is in what is in us, what God has placed in us, will keep us, will keep us in that in, in the midst of that situation. Will give us what we need in the midst of that situation will strengthen us in the midst of that rough situation, that wilderness. Oh, yes, we go through the wilderness. Yes, we do. But God is with us. God is with us. Amen? And, and so it says the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to, to be tempted. Wait a minute. Now, God, you're saying you won't tempt me, but you... You can lead me to be tempted? Come on, you, do you think, do you honestly believe that God would lead you somewhere where you couldn't obtain the victory? And this is what we need to know. We need to know if we are led there, if we are caught in that place, in that wilderness, in that dry season, God has already given us what we need to get through it, to get out of it. That part, yes, exactly. It says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. He was hungry. Hungry means one who is hungry, right? Why was he hungry? Because he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know about you, but when I go a couple of hours, I'm a tad bit hungry. Amen? And I am ready to eat. But when I tell you, when I fast, glory to God, I feel the strength of God. When I fast, I feel close to God. I, I, I feel my relationship is stronger in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so here he is fasting. And you know, when you're fasting, your body, your flesh is weak. You don't have... The, the, the food is what strengthens our body. Amen. And when you're fasting, when you're not eating, your body, your physical body is weak. But when your physical body is weak, that's when your spiritual man is strengthened. And so it says, and when the tempter came, that's Satan, to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, he's tempting him. Do you know the enemy will attack you? In your thoughts, in your mind, when you're when you're looking to become closer to Christ, because he doesn't want you there. It says, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Why? Well, so we know later on there's going to be a situation when God takes two fish and five loaves and feeds a multitude, right? We know that there's a situation where where God will turn water into wine. We know that God has, we know that Jesus Christ has that ability and had that ability at that time, right? But it was not that time. It wasn't time 
for Jesus to begin performing miracles. But the enemy knew that he was capable of doing so and wanted to tempt him to do it knowing that it wasn't time for him to do it, but he wanted Christ to go outside of the will of God, to displease God, because that's what happens when we go outside of the will of God. Amen. I hope you're still with us. Hold on. We're going to wrap this up in a few more minutes. Okay, so stay tuned um, to hear what the Lord is saying to us. Amen. And so it says, but he answered and said, it is written, he answered back and he answered back. And that's what we have to do. We have to answer the enemy back. Glory to God with the word of God. We have to answer when someone is doing something against us or doing something wrong or, or outside of the will of God. We need to answer with the word of God. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So in other words, yes, physically, I may be hungry. Yes, physically, I may be weak, but spiritually, I can speak this word. Spiritually, I can speak the word of the Lord God. And a man shall not live by bread alone, shall not live by what is by touch. Glory to God. Shall not live by what's tangible. Glory to God. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It says, then the devil take him up. So that didn't work. So the enemy had to try something else. How many times have we faced certain things and, and when it didn't work the first time, the enemy comes right back around with something else. It says, then the devil take him up to the holy city and set him on the, the pinnacle of the temple. What? That's the high point of the temple, right? And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, again, you, you're, you're the son of God. Why wouldn't you do this? Why can't you do this? Cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and that in their hands they shall bear thee up. You, you already know that God, the angels are going to come after you. The angels are going to save you. So go ahead and just jump and let, yeah, let the angels do it. Just prove that you are the son of God. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone, the enemy, the, the, the angels aren't going to let you, you, you fall. Won't he try it? Won't the enemy try it? But we win every time. We win every time. Glory to God. It says, Jesus said unto him, it is written. He came back at him again, what? With the word. But see, the thing is, guess what? Satan knows the word. So he tried to use the word, which is found. That what he said to him, that was that's found in Psalms, right? I believe that's Psalm 91, that that's found there. And so he, the enemy tried to come at Jesus with the word. But guess what? Jesus came right back at, at him with the word. And he says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't do it. No, you are not about to make me tempt the Lord my God. Amen. Because we know God will do it doesn't mean we're supposed to put ourselves in a situation because we know God can do it. No, don't do that. And so it says in the eighth verse, again, the devil take him up. So he's still not finished. He's like, oh, you didn't do it that time. You didn't give in that time. Mm -mm. Okay, well, let's try this one. So he took him up into an exceeding high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So he's trying to entice Jesus. How can you entice the son of God who has everything? Why? Because his father has everything. How or why should we be enticed by the things of the world when we serve a God, when our father owns everything? See, we get caught up. But what profits a man to gain the whole white world and lose his soul? What, what, what? Nothing, nothing. So it says, and say unto him, all these things will I give you. Wait a minute. I'm Jesus Christ, the son of God. God in the flesh. And you're telling me what you can give me? Do you know the enemy will try to sweep you off of your feet with the things of this world 
don't go for it. We do not go for it because we know who we are in Christ. Amen. It says, all these things I'll give you if you'll just fall down and worship me. I have more power than you, Satan. Why would I fall down and worship you? That doesn't even make sense. Why would I do what it is you're, called, you're wanting me to do? And so the scripture then goes on and says, Jesus responded. And he says, Satan, if you don't get behind me, get thee behind me. Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. I'm only serving Christ Jesus. No, I'm not serving a man. I'm not serving my job. I'm not serving my those who I, I no. I am serving Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, are we servants? Come on. Yes, we are. You better believe we are. But do we put anyone before Christ? Do we bow down and worship anyone before Christ? Because some of us are worshiping things, not realizing that we are. We're worshiping clothing. We're worshiping money. We're worshiping our family, our children. We're worshiping. Why are we saying, why do you say I worship my children? Why do you say, because you're putting them before God? You're loving them before God? My Lord. And God is not pleased. Amen. Okay, okay. We're, we're about to wrap up. I promise. I promise. We're, so here we are. Uh, so it says in the 11th verse, then the devil leave him. Do you know if you give the word back to the enemy long enough, if, if you say no to him long enough, he's going to leave. Rebuke the devil and he will flee. And that's what Jesus did. He rebuked him and the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So the angels could have come prior to. But God knows, God designed it to be so. Guess what? Sometimes it's good for us to see our victory, to see that we won, to see that we got through, to see that we overcame the tactics of the enemy, the devices, the schemes of the enemy. Because that shows us, that increases our faith. It shows us where we are in Christ. It says the angels then came and ministered unto him, came and strengthened him, whether that is they 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 prayed they lifted him up they um they gave him something to strengthen him they ministered unto him it says now when jesus had heard that john was cast into prison uh so now along the way jesus heard you know um knew found out that john was in prison and so he left galilee and we know galilee is um where where he had been and where he um, began the ministry there, right? Um, and it says, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum. Where is upon the sea coast, my God? Where is upon the sea coast? Let's talk about a little bit first about Galilee real quick. Um, because we know that Ju Jesus left Jud Judea and traveled north to Galilee. So when I, when I say he began his ministry, it was at the beginning uh, stages of his ministry. There he would begin his great Galilean ministry right there uh, of teaching, preaching, healing. He did great works there. Amen. And, and Capernaum was actually the like, headquarters of Jesus' ministry in um, Galilee. Amen. And, and at this time, Galilee was like a little commercial area. And, and so there were things going on. There were people for him to reach there. But this is what is so amazing that Jesus was able to proclaim the good news. Jesus was able to proclaim glory to God. Huh? My God was the, the truth. And so it says, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast and the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken. This was spoken beforehand, that this would be done. This was spoken beforehand, that, that the light would come. Amen. And how many of us know that that light is Jesus Christ? So Jesus overcame temptation. 
and he did it with the word of God. And that's what God wants us to do. Overcome temptation with the word of God. Know your word. Get in your word. Amen. And watch God work. God bless you. You will be blessed. Have an amazing week. And I love you. God bless.